the issue of cell phones and cancer has been the subject of wild controversy and frequently contradictory studies over the last two decades. During that time, one of the researchers whose work has been a standout in this field is Christopher Johansson of Denmark. During his recent visit to the States, we asked him about Scandinavia's unique national medical record system and the logistics of his cell phone and cancer study. The way it, 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 it's it all based on is that <clears throat> in 1968 uh, the government uh, passed a legislation that says that you are allowed to have a personal identification number. This is 10 digits which is unique for every resident in the country. And this law was also passed in Sweden, Norway, in Finland and Iceland and therefore these countries are in principle the only countries where you have complete coverage of all residents from the date of birth until they die. But this number also allows for uh, the establishment of uh, health and disease registries and these sources can then be linked if you apply the data protection board for the right to do it. You are allowed to link in an anonymous way information about the residents of the country. It's a large cohort study of uh, 420,000 subscribers uh, to mobile phones in Denmark. Uh, worldwide, mobile phones were heavily marketed but became uh, broadly used since 1992. And we had access to records of subscription in uh, the two companies which operated in the country at that time. And then we could link the names and telephone number with the personal in identification number and by that identify uh, more than 400,000 subscribers and we have now followed them up for I think it's 18 years and we cannot see that there are uh, any you know data which which say that um, that there should be an increased risk for tumors of the brain, salivary gland, acoustic neuromas or other you know uh, areas in the body close to where you have your mobile phone we find it quite decisive because it's unbiased, it's not uh, influenced by recall of persons who participate and there's actually no selection of persons into the cohort which we now have followed up for so many years. There is resistance, there is you know different uh, opinions and interpretations of the idea that cellular telephones should cause cancer but the majority of papers that have been published uh, also from the large Interphone, it's an international study with uh, participants from many countries of the world. Uh, these studies do not provide evidence that mobile phones, cellular phones as you say, uh, causes cancer. But another piece of evidence which is very important is that uh, a large study which came in the Journal of the National Cancer Institute uh, from our group uh, showed that uh, the incidence of brain tumors is not increasing in these countries, in the Scandinavian countries. So that is another piece of proof showing that if the incidence doesn't change and the exposure of mobile phones is now, you know, two or three billion people have a phone um, and the, uh, the device would be a, a causative agent, you would expect some changes in the incidence uh, numbers already, but we haven't seen that. But I guess the debate will continue because there will be believers and there will be negatives.